Resync! Hello and welcome to the first of hopefully many videos where I will rehearse, 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 rewind, rewind, undo. Hello and welcome to the first of hopefully many videos where I will go through old blog posts which I have written. My point is, this is the first of many blog to video video where I go through a blog which I've written and then talk about it. Anyhow, let's talk about shortening variable names. You can find the link to the article itself in the description below. Shortening variable names. It's a ginormous waste of time. Thank you for watching. Now, it's a bit more than that. Let me elaborate why shortening variable names is a waste of time. And before you dislike the video, make sure to hear me out. Or dislike, then you'll prove you didn't hear me out. So let's look at a little snippet of code here. If TS has T, then you're gonna close TS. So if TS has a T, you're gonna close TS. What is TS? What is T? To know that, you will have to read the context. You will have to read the entire class or figure out what T is by hovering over it and maybe pressing a shortcut or something like that. Either way, you have to spend extra time finding out what TS is and T is. So let's look. Train station TS equals city get closest ts so we see we have even shortened names in method names that's uh, it's the same problem in different format okay so we know that ts is a train station let's go back to the code if ts has t then we're gonna close the ts so if the train station has a t whatever t is then you're gonna close the train station so by using that knowledge alone, I would assume that T is just a train. I mean, it's a train station after all. I mean, it could be a tenant, I guess. Uh, but that's the point. You, you won't know until you check it out. So let's check it out. Here we see T is a train or train T. Hold on. It's not the train. I mean, it is a train, but it's an electric train. Electric train. It's, it should be ET, like the alien, like the finger. Train T equals new electric train. Okay, let's remember that. Going back to the other code again, if a train station has the train, which is electric, then we're gonna close the train station. Okay, so I assume just by this context alone that we're waiting for the last train, perhaps. That's not the point of this example. The point here is shortening variable names. So let's take a little look at the advantages. Let's look at the pros for uh, writing shortened variable names. Step one, you save horizontal screen space. You save horizontal screen space. Step two. Step two. There is no step two. I mean, I've heard excuses. You save time by spending less time typing. You will code faster. Those I've heard, like honestly, that, that's excuses I've gotten for shortening variable names in long, complicated classes. To those people, I say, baloney, bollocks, bullcrap. Believe it or not, shortening variable names is a big time waster. Because not only, in the end, are you wasting your own time, you're wasting everyone else's time. Everyone else that's working on the project, that have, that have to go through your code, will have to waste time reading your short and variable names. The reason for this is surprisingly intuitive once you stop to think about it. So let's stop to think about it. Yep. Let's let me demonstrate by going through a few steps again. More numbers. Yes. Let's assume you're not familiar with the code. Let's assume you got a new task and you're tasked to solve a problem in this specific class where we have the short variable names T, TS, and everything else. Step one. You read the code. I love numbers. Step two. You are stumbling across this code snippet. T S 
If TS has T, you're gonna close TS. That means step two is you have to find out what TS is. You find that TS is train station and you have to remember that. And remembering that is step three. Step four, we still have T to think about. So we have to find out what T is. T is electric train, not just train, but electric train. We might rename this to ET, but eh, what do we know? Okay, so now I have to remember that T is a electric train. Not just train, electric train. Then you stop working, which is step six. You write the code, do the thinking, how to solve this problem. Maybe you run the code, who knows? Step seven. Throughout all of this, you always have to remember that TS and T is train station and not train but electric train that's the process that's the, that's basically simplified workflow let's now look at the workflow if you did not have shortened variable names on this side step one you read the code step two you write the code There's no room for step 3 here. I added bricks. So if we go back to look at the old list here. You read the code, you find out what TS is, you remember what TS is, you find out what T is, you, you remember that T is electric train. You write the code and you have to keep remembering it. And even if you remember it, let's say you already know the domain, you, you're the master of everything. You know that T is always electric train for whatever reason. You know that TS is train station, you know this. Guess what? You're cutting only two steps from this list. Guess which ones? Two and four. It's still more work as the domain expert than the newbie that has to read readable code. Now, you may not save a lot of time because the domain expert probably know how to fix that like in a snap. But the point here is, you should probably not use shortened variables, I guess. I mean, I will conclude that by now, but maybe you're not completely convinced. So let me go through the mental map of it all, like what, what I mean by mental map. I mean the things that's going in here. Hopefully it's going in here. Let's talk about H. H stands for hello. Now you have to remember this now. H is hello. Every time I mention H, it's going to be hello. So in your mind, when you are reading the variable name H, you have to think hello. What does this mean? I mean, what I mean by this is that when you're reading hello, it takes less time for you than reading the word H and remembering H is hello. After all, you're spending most of the time reading. You're not spending most of the time coding. You may think you are, but you're definitely not. You're probably looking through the code, scrolling, scrolling up, scrolling down, going between classes, reading, reading. I mean, that's the job as a developer, it's reading the code, understanding it, f fixing it, you know, making it better, hopefully. So this is because when you look at H, you have to recall H is low. You don't have to do that if you read hello, because it's right there. It happens at the same time as you read hello. It's just hello. But that's not probably not the worst part. Because when you jump between code, jump between classes, when you jump between work from one developer to another developer, you may find other people using H for something else. It can be heavy or hello. I mean, who knows? You will still have to check between every class. You can't just assume H is a hello everywhere. In summary, as I have written, shortening variable names add several not just one, not just two, but many, many unnecessary steps, wasteful steps in your workflow, your mental workflow. It's an inefficient way to code, but you're also wasting the time of yourself and everyone else that's reading the code. In contrast, using longer descriptive names would make you save time, wouldn't it? Don't make the developers have to think more than they already do by writing shortened verbal names. As I did in the blog I have to do here. I'll finish this up with a quote from Robert C. Martin. 
also known as Uncle Bob. Maybe you've heard of him. And this quote is from the book Clean Coat. What page is it on? Okay, I cannot find the specific page, but I have written it down. Indeed, the ratio of time spent reading versus writing is well over 10 to 1. We are constantly reading old code as part of the effort of to write new code. Therefore, making it easy to read makes it easier to write. Oh. That was my horrible impression of uh, Robert C. Martin, and I apologize if he ever sees this. Please look in the description below for a link to the blog if you wish to read it yourself. Or comment below in the description to tell me what short and variable names have you found that are useful. One useful name I can think of is exception E. Usually it is an F1, 2 or 3 liner try catch. You also have for loops. Now hopefully you are not using for loops ever. But if you are and it's very short and concise in a descriptive method, eh, for I. I'll allow it. Tell me about the worst short and variable names you come across. That you're allowed to share, of course. Assuming you're not under a non disclosement agreement. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye.